Hi, I'm Samson Tudor and this is my exhibition, Strange Times. So the title Strange Times, um, I wrestled with quite a bit actually. I, I wanted to pick something that encapsulated the bizarre, surreal world that we've, we've lived in the past three years now. Um, but also not, not pin it down to a specific narrative, a specific interpretation, still allow a, a, a universal approach. Um, not pin it down to a specific time period either. So I felt like Strange Times just encapsulated everything. Yeah, I wanted to explore the world as stage, uh, the theatre of the world concept, um, just because it allowed such a, a fantastic spectrum of, um, of, of literal interpretation and metaphoric, in, metaphorical interpretation, uh, and allowed for a huge scope of, of visual imagery uh, and a, a rich vein of iconography to explore. Um, it's something that's been interpreted throughout history by various um, literary figures, philosophers, artists, um, from Plato to Shakespeare through to the German Expressionist movement. Um, such a rich thing to, to investigate and I think with what's gone off in the world recently it seems like a, a, an important thing to, to try and interpret now in, in the world we live in today. Um, so that's why I, that's why I chose to, to explore that. I, I always view my work as, as politics with a small p um, and, and hope it, it, it reaches broader themes. Uh, it's socio-political but I, I never want it to be dogmatic in, in terms of saying it's assigned very much to this way of thinking politically and, and, and I need it to be open to as many interpretations as possible. So I, I think the interest in, in that type of work stems from just that it's, it's, there's so many things going off in the world I feel like it's impossible to ignore at times and I've always um, enjoyed art that that has something to say about the world we live in um, and about the time um, and, and comments on, on universal themes such as the human condition and, uh, and, and division um, and society, you know, aspects of society at the time. The work, I, the work doesn't carry any particular comment in terms of um, the patriarchy or any gender statements. It's not a, a preoccupation. Gender isn't a preoccupation of the of the work. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of male figures that feature in the work, um, and I, I think partially because I, I use myself as reference a lot of the time when I'm in the studio to, to start the, the figuration, um, and potentially I, I think perhaps subconsciously. I, um, my family background is, is a mining background, so um, there's possible connections there for the working class male. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's never something I, I, I don't set out to make a comment on, on masculinity. I, the, the work may be read in those terms, um, and again, it, you know, it's in, open to interpretation, so people may read that in, into the works. Um, there's a lot of comment on the, the working class nature of the works and that's equally something that, that's there for interpretation but never something I specifically go out to make a statement on. It, it, they're a vehicle for broader themes, human condition, um, rather than a, a specific comment on, on masculinity, I think. So I always think the the works have to be open to interpretation, um, and have to be engaging, crucially, um, and have to invite the audience um, to almost complete the picture by reading into it a, a variety of things and potential different narratives, different themes. I, I, I never want the work to be dogmatic in saying it has to be, it, you have to read this into it, it's, it's, you have to see this as a, as a definite piece of commentary. I think when you view the work um, with the context of being socio-political and, and what's going off in the world and what's gone off the past few years. Um, I think there's a, there's a huge range of, of things that can be read into each piece for sure. That's where the atmosphere and the tone of the work is crucial um, because I think that, that leads the viewer um, to certain commentaries potentially but, but again they have, to, they have to bring their own interpretations, the viewer crucially, the audience crucially complete the picture. Um, which again links thematically, there's, there's a few comments around spectatorship I guess with, with these works um, linking back to the world, the stage and the theatre of the world. Um, 
you know, part of the act of painting, obviously the act of looking, the act of spectating. Um, there's a few portraits in here that are looking straight back at the viewers with that, that questioning glance. Um, so all of that ties in again to the theme. Yeah, I, I use myself as reference. Um, they're certainly not, they're not self-portraits. Again, it's, it's as a, a figuration as a, as a vehicle for broader themes. Um, so, so to that degree, I, in a way, it's, it's important. It's always important with, with your art to have to have something of yourself in the in the works. Um, but equally, I hope. I hope people, I hope the audience brings something of themselves when looking into the work. It, it has to say something about everyone, in a sense, rather than rather than a specific, you know, rather than specifically about myself. If that makes any sense. <laughs> So a lot, a lot of the um, German Expressionist movement, um, Max Beckmann, Kate Kollwitz, Otto Dix, all artists that, that responded to the world they lived in and the times they lived in. Um, so the socio-political artists interest me um, uh, and, and the movements that, that relate to that really. Um, but but there's, a, there's a big range of historical influences. I'm, I'm fascinated by, by loads of art movements um, and I think they've all got so many things to say, particularly about the, the time period they lived in. So I usually start, um, particularly this series, I started with collage, um, just because that, that allows, it allows a more playful approach to the composition and I think it, it, it really fits. I think that's where the, the medium fits the message. So. There's elements with collage where you're you're placing the figures around the stage, if that makes sense. You, it's the the medium is it encourages dynamic compositions. It encourages different readings, different narratives. So I've started with that uh, increasingly, um, and then progressed to graphite studies, pastel studies. And then I usually use them as the basis of a composition for a for a large oil painting. Um, but I never set out to illustrate a specific scene. It's it's always investigating uh, concepts and, and themes um, and I work with that as I create the work. I, I never have a completely finished picture in mind um, and, and I'm always searching for a, for a specific tone or an atmosphere uh, that's much more that's m much more my aim with the work um, rather than to just illustrate something specific. I'm always searching for a, for a tone or an atmosphere. Yeah, so so I particularly in my in my drawing, which my drawing style has always been quite a graphic style, um, and I've always tried to ramp up the sculptural qualities of it, um, which is why I, I, I'm such a big fan of the German Expressionist movement. Um, and I think the figuration allows much more energetic compositions, and and the sculptural qualities sort of um, move move you move the audience from from one element of the composition to the next, and, and imply different narratives. Um, and that, that started actually, that, that style in terms of the drawing started with, with life drawing classes at university um, where I very quickly layered the paper with heavy graphite and then would carve the light into the drawing with a rubber. Um, and so that was a very sculptural way of, of working and I, I tried to translate that into the paintings, um, into the collages, into the pastels as well. Um, so this, the sculptural element for me is more it's more of the intrigue on, on, on the light, um, the light and shadow and, and how that emphasises the expressive qualities of the, of the figuration and, and, the emo and the emotions as well. I think, I think it strengthens the, strengthens the figuration when it's, when it's got a sculptural feel. So memoir is probably the, the most melancholic, um, sombre painting in the exhibition, um, and probably the most surreal. It, it has a it has sort of a mysticism and, and magical sort of undertones, um, centred around yeah, well, it's twelve figures around a table, so it immediately recalls the Last Supper as well as um, Da Vinci's Last Supper as well as Cezanne's card players. Um, th there's a sense uh, again the theatre of the world. There's a sense of um, things unfolding and, and scenery changing around 
characters living out their daily lives. Um, whilst th there's, there's, potential, there's potentially quite a variety of, of different narratives at play, um, and that can be interpreted in, in so many different ways.